Hi, Peter. Thanks for uh, thanks for um, giving up a little bit of time today to have a chat to us about uh, your business and the um, Agri Food and Beverage Voucher Program. Um, for those who don't know Blue Ridge Marin, could you tell us a little bit about your business? We're a Marin wholesaler, but also involved in the export um, side of things as well. We've been exporting for around about twenty years, and about fifteen years ago, we uh, went into rainbow trout as well, um, but only on the domestic market. And just of late, we've been getting a lot of inquiries for export rainbow trout up into Southeast Asia, particularly into Singapore and Hong Kong. And um, yeah, the, the rest we'll talk about later in the interview, I suppose. So just up front, um, you know, the last few months obviously have been pretty challenging for everyone. Um, how's, how's COVID and, and, the, and the travel restrictions, et cetera, how have they impacted you guys in terms of the operation of your business? Yeah, sure. Well, we went from full production uh, on an upward curve for the past 20 plus years to zero income overnight. Yeah. Um, I don't think it could be more dramatic, Kim. The, um, once the government announced that they were going to close restaurants, um, that was the finish of our business for that period in time. Um, having said that, we were still supplying chilled rainbow trout to the seafood retailers in Perth, which gave us a small amount of income, but the bottom line was uh, marin sales stopped dead in their tracks. And so we were sort of shut down for about eight weeks and we've only recently reopened, probably about uh, two weeks ago. And the curve is unbelievable. It's going up like a rocket at the moment and things are starting to, we're not far off being normal production again. Oh, great news. And Pete, what are some of the strategies you put in place during, you know, during the period where, you know, where you had no income coming in, where there um, were the particular things you did to, um, to navigate through that period? What I haven't mentioned so far is, is we've been expanding into the trout side of things. And we had a shed, a kit shed sitting on the farm here waiting to be constructed. So we used that eight week period to put the shed up. So we, kept, we still kept very, very busy but just without income. Yeah, yeah. It's a common story, actually. We're hearing from a lot of businesses that have really you know, looked for activities to keep themselves active and, uh, and to position themselves for, you know, for post-COVID during this period, um, which is a pretty useful segue, I guess, into the, um, into the voucher program. Um, so you were one of the businesses that were successful in the, in the current round um, of the Agri-Food and Beverage Voucher Program. Um, could you could you tell everyone a little bit about uh, what your voucher was for and, um, and and how you've applied it? Well, we are actually the largest uh, wholesaler in Western Australia um, of Marin, and as such, there's only two of us in the business, two two working directors. And uh, when we started getting inquiries from overseas for our product for chilled rainbow trout, uh, the, the inquiries were quite strong, and they started probably about. 12 to 18 months ago, and um, we had a couple of goes. We we operate under a federal agreement for our export, what's called an approved arrangement. Uh, That that approved arrangement allows us to export live marin around the world, and we have EU accreditation as well. Um, So we can pretty much ship anywhere in the world that allows marin into the country. once we got the inquiry for Rainbow Trout, we had to do a few sums on it to see whether it was going to be viable, but the inquiries were very, very strong. And um, what that would in, uh, entail for us was that we had to make amendments to our approved arrangement to allow us to export Rainbow Trout. Um, now, being a HACCP facility, um, it's quite detailed what you actually have to do. So I sat down for a couple of weeks and so did Steve, my business partner, and we we tried putting it together on two different occasions over the past 18 months. But because we're very, very time poor, we just just kept shelving it and said, well, we'll get back to it when we've got more time. Um, And then the voucher program came up, was pointed out to us, and then we thought, well, why don't we, we're not gonna have time, that's the bottom line. Why don't we apply for the voucher and see if we can get someone to do the paperwork side of things for us who's familiar with that type of thing. So we applied and were successful. And as as a consequence of that, we engaged a professional professional service provider 
who has since done the work and it's been sent off to Canberra. We've got the tick and we can now export uh, chilled rainbow trout into Singapore and Hong Kong. Excellent. And Pete, a number of people said to me in the first, you know, the first round of the program, they're saying, look, it's, it's not a particularly large amount of money that you're giving businesses. You know, how is it actually going to make a difference? I was really interested in the first conversation we had after you'd completed the work, um, that in reality, a fairly small voucher actually did make a difference. Uh, could you just explain a little bit of a little bit about that for uh, people who might be thinking about applying for the next round? It was a small amount of money. Um, we got a quote which was uh, necessary to be eligible for the the, the uh, voucher and the quote, the guy came in and he said he could do it for around about, uh, oh, just off the top of my head, $1,800, for example, um, of which the voucher would cover half of it. And it was the difference at that time between saying, well, you know, if we can get this whole thing done for $900, why not? <laughs> because, we, yeah. you know, that's, that's definitely worthwhile to us. So that was what, how it worked out for us, Kim, at the end of the day. It, it, uh, it gave us the, the incentive to get it done and, um, it, we, yeah, we took advantage of it and it, and it was, it was the, what tripped us over the line at the end of the day. Uh, it's, look, it's great to hear that because the, the original concept behind this was to say we've got a lot of small to medium businesses in Western Australia where the managers, the directors, the owners are trying to be a million things to a million different people and trying to encompass a really broad range of skills. And something has to fall through the cracks when that's going on. So bringing in expert assistance to try and address some of those issues, which would have consumed a lot of time um, from the business owner or from the business manager, was really one of the ways we thought we could move, you know, move ventures forward um, with a relatively small outlay, but also you know, stimulating that connection in WA and actually building the ecosystem that sits behind the food and beverage industry? One other small thing which uh, I haven't mentioned to you was that uh, while Singapore are up and running and we're going to be shipping some trout up to them next week, uh, Hong Kong came back and they asked us how if we were ready and I said, yep, we can now do it. Uh, and they said, that's fantastic. And the reason it's fantastic is because minimum shipment requirements. Um, basically. You know, we've got a minimum order of, it's, it's quite small, it's only 40 kilos, but sometimes they only have, say, two boxes of marin. They're now actually able to top it off with two boxes of trout, which gives us the gross weight for a minimum shipment size. So, you know, little things like that make the difference between an export shipment and one, one happening and one not happening. Yeah, yeah. What do you see as the, uh, what do you see as the future, Pete? Um, how's, the next, how's the next 12 months looking for, for you and your business? If you asked me two weeks ago, Kim, I'd, you probably would have heard a sob story. But uh, given the past two weeks and what's happened, we had one of our busiest days yesterday that we've had in probably our history. Um, and the inquiries that are coming through, particularly from overseas right now, it's, it's quite amazing. Not so much for the rainbow trout, um, but more for the getting Marin up and running again. Um, and and it's, it's all good. That's what we needed. We have... 170 growers that supply us with Marin. So it's not just us that benefit benefit from this. Um, those 170 growers um, were very, very concerned. Some of them were quite stressed over whether we would be able to take any Marin off them this year. And it just so happens that the time that we take the most Marin is the start of June, and which is when our business kicked back. Well, just after, shortly after that is when our business kicked back into gear. So if COVID-19 had have just been hitting now, or if we get a second wave now, I'd be very concerned. But provided, you know, we've been very happy with what the government's done, uh, the state government in particular, in holding strong on the borders. And we don't have what's going on in Victoria, which is fantastic. Um, but even having said that, we're starting to get inquiries from Victoria again now and from New South Wales, where that was totally shut down on us before. Right. And Pete, for the um, for the West Aussies who uh, who happen to uh, happen to catch this, um, how do they? Sorry, happen to catch this broadcast. Um, how do they? Um, how do they get in touch? How do they? Uh, how do they get some uh, Blue Ridge Marin and Rainbow Trout on their plate? It's very easy. You just go onto our website at uh, blueridgemarin.com, and all our details are there, Kim. Thanks very much, Pete. Really appreciate your time. Um, really great to hear that uh, that the voucher's having a positive impact and uh, yeah, really keen to watch your progress going forward. Now, thanks very much for your time and we're very appreciative of the, of the voucher. Pleasure. 
Cheers, mate.